Hi everybody, this is Crystal. I recently posted some instructions on a simple um, frequency separation and I thought that it might be helpful to actually screen capture my doing that according to the steps that I listed. That way you can get a better idea for what you need to do. So I'm going to do that right now. I've chosen this picture because there are some little spots on her that need to be cleaned up and there's obviously some tonal issues so this is a good picture to um, do a, a, a video on. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start now. Um, the first thing that you're going to do is click on the background layer and make two copies of this. You can do that by dragging that background layer down to the new layer icon. Do that twice. Then double click on the bottom one and name it low. Oops. And double click on the top one and name it high. Now you're going to turn the high layer off and then click on the low layer. That's the layer that we're going to work on for right now. Then what you do is go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And you want to set a radius that is going to, just as you get to uh, getting rid of the fine details. So I'm going to use her eye for an example. Without a radius, this is what we're looking at here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase that until it just gets rid of them which is about eh, right there. It's okay if you do it a little bit strong at this point. If you find that it's too strong, you can always lower the opacity of that layer later. So I'd rather have it a little bit too strong and lower the opacity than not strong enough. All right, so that looks good to me. I'm gonna click okay. All righty. Then I'm going to highlight the high layer now you do not want to turn this on yet, you just want to click on that high layer. High layer. Then you go to Image, Apply Image, and then on this screen what you want to do is change the layer type to Low, change the Blending Mode to Subtract, if I can find it, there we go. The Scale will always be 2 and the Offset will be 128. So again, layer to low, blending to subtract, scale is 2, offset 128, and then you click OK. Then go ahead and turn your high layer on, and it will look like this. Then what you want to do is change your blending mode of that higher layer, high layer. Um, you click on the blending mode, and you're going to change it to linear light. When you do this, the picture's not going to look any different. You're going to think, OK, well, what did that do? Well when you start editing you will see. So the high layer is going to get rid of um, the, the details, the flaws. So I'm going to zoom in real quick on my picture. Maybe. There we go. To where I can see those. And what I choose to use, I choose to use my healing brush tool which is right over here. So go down to healing brush and with your healing brush tool uh, on high layer. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So using your alt button on Windows, um, and I'm not sure what it is on a Mac. Uh, I have a Mac at home, but for the life of me I can't remember right now. But anyway, so what you want to do is you want to sample the area of skin that you want to replace your blemish with. So this looks good right here. You want to pick something that's close to where you're at. So push the alt button down, click on that spot, and then come over and erase your blemish. Keep doing that. Get all of those out of there. So what I'm doing is I'm erasing detail. I am not touching the color. I'm just getting little blemishes. If you notice, the colors stay the same. Like I can go to change the detail right here. That color's still there because that color is controlled on the low layer. So right now all I'm working on is getting all of the little imperfections. And I'm not going to do all of them because it'll take far too long uh, to show you in this. But that gives you an idea. So again, you're just finding a piece of skin that looks clear, hitting your Alt button, clicking on that skin, and then going over your detail. Okay? So then, once you're done with that, if you wanted to even out these tonals, 
you go to your low layer and it's very much the same way um, again find a piece of skin that's close to where you're at and sample it alt click and then go over to where the redness is and this does not de this does not delete your detail this is only working on tonal issues colors and stuff so like I said there's a lot of red on this baby and I'm not liking it so I do see frequency separation to get rid of it this is rosy I like rosy that's okay I don't like this down here so I'm gonna click on that I'm gonna make this match that and come up here and do whoops a little bit too much let's try that again come up here and do that over here I'm going to do that She's got some red over here on this eye. So I'm going to click what's next to her. Now be careful when you get around lines and wrinkles and stuff like that. You want to match them up. So what I'm doing is I'm clicking over here on a clear spot. And then when I get over here, I want to make sure that I match that line up so that it doesn't look funny. And we can even whoops, clear up some of this down here. That didn't help. That was worse. So let's see getting too close to the edge which is why that happened that's a little bit better so this isn't perfect but it gives you an idea of how to to use that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the before and after actually I see another tonal issue right there um, and here OCD kicking in anyway I'm gonna show you the before and after so you don't have to do this at home but I'm gonna group these two layers together so that I can turn them both on and off at the same time and so here is the before and the after and you cannot tell that that baby has been altered um, frequency separation is awesome because it doesn't over edit it doesn't make the child's skin look plastic you reserve some of that detail while while fixing the tone um, so it's a great tool to use and it's really not that hard to do as far as creating an action for this prior to doing all of these steps let me pull my actions up first if you want to create an action that does all of this, I'm going to take you through it really, really fast. So let me delete what I've done, okay? I'm going to hit, where's it at? Uh, new action. I'm going to put, name it, separation, or frequency separation. Uh, I can't type today. And I want it to, to nest in my default. So I'm going to hit record. Let me move this out of the way. So then, bottom layer, bottom layer, rename it. I'm not going to worry about if it's caps or not. Turn off the high layer, click on the low, filter, blur, Gaussian blur. You'll get it to where you want it. You'll click OK. Then you'll click on the high layer and image, apply image, run low, subtract scale is 2 offset 128 hit OK make that visible again and change the blending to linear light and then once you've done that don't do any editing hit stop okay so then what happens is here is my action right here let me delete everything that I just did hang on just a second maybe there we go now watch if I play that let me push this over a little bit watch down here bingo done now all I have to do is go into each of my layers and begin editing so there you have it that's how it's done that's how you create an action if you want to personally I would the thing is is that Gaussian blur layer may be different for different assignments so that's something that you have to keep in mind um, but yeah this is how I do it and I love this process I know a lot of you have mentioned Flurn I love Flurn Flurn is an amazing tool I personally was not able to use Flurn's um, action for some reason I just could never get it to work right so um, I looked at other avenues and this is what I came up with so hopefully this helps and uh, happy editing all right take care bye bye